G'day. Today we're doing a transmission service on a 36 Ford. Uh, it's got a C4 transmission in it. They've put a... Actually, it's got a C10, which is uh, hand-filled C4 transmissions. Now what's happening, he's got the, uh, the vacuum line hooked up over here on the carby. And he's probably not getting enough vacuum to the transmission. His problem is, is that the, the upshift pattern's up too high. Now ideally, uh, the vacuum would be best uh, tapped into the, direct into the inlet manifold somewhere, just so you get maximum vacuum to the transmission. Um, this one here has got the brake booster underneath the, the vehicle, um, so that's, that's got good vacuum going to his brakes, but the transmission one's over here up on the carby, so that's a little pro problem he has to fix at some later stage. It actually also looks like that vacuum might even be disconnected at the bottom. So we'll lift that up and have a look anyway. Here we go. The uh, the transmission actually goes through the, the chassis there. So there's not a lot of access to it. There's his brake booster there. And there we go. There's the problem there. That It looks like that's his vacuum line. And there's the pipe just there. It's actually come off. So that'll what that'll do is uh, it'll create... Uh, the transmission will think that it's got no vacuum so it'll have the upshifts um, at a later later speed so we've got to do something to fix that um, it's also got an oil leak so it's probably softened that rubber uh, looks like it might be on the cooling line there but you can see what I mean that, that's a pan filled um, that's a filler tube going into the pan. Um, the C4s are the ones where over here the filler tube goes directly into the case. So someone smeared celastic all over everything here. It looks like it might have had had a leak and they just kept tightening up the pan. So we'll do a service on it. We might even need to replace those lock nuts um, if they're leaking there. Um, not a lot of access to it um, so we might have to let it cool down a bit it's still a bit hot before we start doing any work on it 7 8 and that won't damage your uh, filler tube we've also grinded these off here because sometimes that'll flex when these are on too tight and we just support that with a with a shifter or an open ender just so it doesn't flex out when you're taking it off. You can see they've put this elastic um, everywhere trying to stop it from leaking. Um, they've also over tightened it so it's actually split the gasket. Just be careful because the oil is pretty hot in it. I'm just going to let that drain out slowly like that otherwise it's going to overshoot our tray. <laughs> Now on our little chart there you can see that the band adjustment for a C4, uh, the, the front band, uh, if it's got a solid band, it's 120 inch pound, uh, they're the pre-65 pre C4s, and back off one and three quarter turns. Um, the, the flex bands, which are like in the later ones, the, the C10s, C5s, 10 inch pound, uh, back off one turn uh, if it's got a coarse thread um, on the adjustment. The, um, the ones with the fine thread, uh, which are in the C5s, it's 10 inch pound, um, do it up 10 inch pound, 
and then back off three turns. The low and reverse are basically, uh, or oh, the rear band, 120 inch pound, back off one and a half turns. So quite easy to do. Um, the band adjustments on the outside of the transmission. Um, the vacuum modulators on the the early ones, um, they're a screw in modulator. You can get adjustable ones and if you want it to shift a bit harder or later um, or, or earlier and softer, um, you can adjust that um, little screw inside the modulator. The later modulators, they're a push in uh, modulator, so yeah, same, same thing with the adjustment. Um, there is a, also another little hack you can do um, if your engine's running um, a lumpy cam and there's lower vacuum by adjusting the, the little pin in there that's on the modulator valve. The, the modulators, you can see the little adjustment screw in there. Um, the one on, on the left, that's the C10 one, the push-in one. You can see the C4 one's got a thread on it. Um, so that one screws in. This one has a little bracket that holds holds it over here. Um, the bolt goes onto the extension housing. So you screw that out if you want um, the shifts to be a little bit softer. The, uh, the pins that go on the modulator valve, um, through trial and error we've just basically got different lengths um, that you can just put in a longer pin or a shorter pin depending on what what's going on and what um, what sort of engine vacuum you've got um, supplying the modulator. General rule um, if you've got low vacuum you shorten the pin that's basically how it works um, but again it, it'll be trial and error um, you can uh, the, the problem arises is when you shorten the pin and screw the modulator in or back it out or extend make the pin a little bit longer and and uh, back it in or out so there are many variations of what can be done um, to, to change the shift uh, quality in the transmission Yeah, it's still a bit hot so I'm just going to let it drain out a bit, a bit better like that. I've left one bolt in there there. Um, it's going to be hard to show because of these, these rails here um, are in the way but it's going to be hard to show uh, the band, how we do the band adjustment um, but I've basically just described it there. Um, also the, the selector linkage is a little bit out. It's um, starting slightly more towards uh, in neutral it's starting slightly towards reverse so I don't know how I'm going to get my hands in there to get to it um, but we'll have a crack at that as well and we might have to just temporarily put a a clamp on that vacuum line just so it doesn't pop off um, it needs to be actually ideally um, bent and come out here away from the exhaust and back through the um, through that cross member there and then back into the modulator you can just see the modulator slightly through there it's not a lot of access for it but uh, yeah something needs to be done about it um, we'll end up taking the filter off here um, the, the filters in the C4s and the C10s are slightly different they, uh, C10s have got a little spring on them um, just make sure you put all that back in when you put it together just looking at the pan gasket, you can see why it was leaking. Um, yeah, over tightening it, it's actually split the gasket in a few places. Over here, over here. So the more you tighten it, um, the, the more it's going to press into it. Um, this little baffle here, we usually knock that out. It just makes filling a lot easier. We just knock that little plastic bit out. And here we've got the filter. Um, 
under this little bit here that sticks out there's a little spring and a valve there so just make sure you don't lose that and uh, the spring actually goes up against the filter the valve goes inside the valve body um, if you're choosing to just wash out this filter um, just make a note because up on this side um, the oil comes in through here and and there's a little where, where it sucks it up through the pump um, just the, the f moving the sucking action of the pump can um, make those filter screens split so just t make a note of uh, if that um, is split or not uh, if you're choosing to, to reuse the old one and just flush it out um, they're not very expensive so we're just gonna um, replace it basically what we're doing is we're repairing so that um, cooling line a uh, cooling vacuum line um, doesn't pop off the hose um, the hose is too long in this it should only have that little um, elbow rubber on it we're replacing the lock nuts on the adjusters uh, on the band adjuster um, bolts and uh, he's gonna have to bring it in at a later stage where he can leave it with me I might have to um, cut a little access point here so I can put my hand in um, there's just nowhere to put your hand through to either adjust the modulator or um, do any work on the cooling lines there's a little valve and spring that just pushes up into there under the filter now you can actually get these Dacron um, filters that have like the the modern day transmissions with the Dacron material instead of the the mesh um, material in there they are a little bit finer but if you've got a problem with your transmission um, it's going to block that up pretty quickly so it's sort of uh, one of those things where you've got to decide uh, whether you want to keep the transmission nice and clean or if there's a problem with it um, yeah it's going to show up after this is blocked um, it's probably a good idea to put one of those neodymium magnets in there as well um, basically the cleaner you keep the transmissions the longer they last um, and the cooler uh, you keep them this transmission's got a little oil cooler on the front of it and there it is there just it's just a tiny little um, cooler but uh, a lot lot more significant than the cooler that's built into the radiator on on most of these things basically that's the only um, cool well that's the cooler line that's built into your radiator it's just a sleeve set up and the oil circulates between those two pipes a slightly larger and smaller pipe um, that's trying to cool your transmission oil down um, if you've got a problem or your transmission does hard work um, it's going to be heating up the water in your radiator and uh, vice versa if you yeah, uh, water boils at 100 degrees at, uh, at, at sea level uh, slightly higher at uh, if it's pressurized that's why we um, pressurize the cooling system so that to take up the the boiling um, point temperature but anyway, um, good idea to put a transmission oil cooler on, on your transmission. Um, also, these things, they, they develop a little crack there because they're soldered together. Um, the heating and cooling effect of um, your radiator will eventually uh, make a little split in there and uh, coolant's not very nice when it goes into your automatic transmission. Now when you're putting the gasket on, just um, it'll have these little bits that just press out on this particular one. Um, this bit needs to be pressed out here. This one here, you can see it just, you just rip it off carefully. Um, another thing we do, instead of tightening the hell out of the, the filler tube, we put a little, um, a little o-ring in there and it'll fit quite nicely in there. There's a little recess there. And then you don't have to over tighten the, the filler tube. You still need to tighten it up nicely, but it's less likely to leak. Um, we've also knocked these 
holes down a bit just so they're not cutting into the gasket when you heat it up and uh, just straightened out the little dings on the on the bottom of the pan we've also knocked out that little plastic plug there it's just to stop the splashing going back up the, the filler tube but uh, yeah, it doesn't really do that we found so it just slows down the filling time drives you nuts now you can see the lock nuts with the new one and the old one that they just covered in Celastic bit worn, uh, torn there, the rubber, so that's why they did it. That's the front band, uh, that one's 10 inch pound back off one turn. And there's the rear one, I don't know how I'm going to get my hands in there, I can't seem to get, get in there, but I've got to wangle it somehow. Uh, that one looks like it's been leaking more. They've covered it in, absolutely covered it in celastic. And there we go. It's just easier to take the whole, the whole thing out there. You can see how much goop they put on there. Um, yeah, you can see the little you can see the little splits in the rubber there, that's why it would have been leaking. The reason my camera won't focus on it, but you can see the little, the little splits there in it. I don't know if you can see that. And we've got the new one. It's hard to see on this particular one because of the that uh, chassis rail there but sometimes if someone's fiddled with it with a screwdriver they might have even done a bit of damage so I'm just feeling there there should be a little chamfer in that where the adjustment um, nut thread goes in uh, it feels all nice and smooth so um, very hard to even get to it from here. Anyway, the rear band is uh, tighten it up and uh, back off one and a half turns. So we're just going to go and do that now. Yeah, I hope that's uh, pointed out a few little things that might help you do a service on, on your C4, even if it's in a 36 Ford. Thank you for watching.